So, hello open formers. Welcome to our discussion again about the uh, heat transfer. Okay. So in the last video, we have done a very very simple case using Laplacian foam and seeing how uh, heat conducts through a pipe. Of course, uh, that's not the only mode of heat transfer. Uh, we will have conduction, convection, and radiation, and this will be uh, all the modes of heat transfer. So, <coughs> excuse me, just to run you through, let me clear this up. Okay, so I made a copy of the tutorial file, the heat transfer tutorial file, and just want to run you through again what, what it is. So here you won't find Laplacian foam, you will find all the other convection solvers. So you have buoyant simple foam, buoyant pimple foam. Uh, these are the forced and natural convection solvers. Now you see this buoyant businesque uh, pimple foam, simple foam and pimple foam. These use the businesque approximation, meaning to say that density only changes as a result of temperature, uh, nothing else. And you see this thing called the uh, CHT multi-region uh, foam and mul CHT multi-region simple foam. Um, <coughs> these are uh, conjugate heat transfer. That's why they're called CHT. Uh, simple foam represents, of course, the uh, steady state version. So anytime you see simple foam, there's a steady state version. Anytime you see pimple foam, it is the non-steady state version. Now these two, I will just ignore out of the out of the scope of this video series. Um, so let's go. Let's start with uh, the very simple ones. Um, I'm going to ignore the Boussinesque uh, simple and pimple foam because uh, I mean they use a the approximation that you know uh, temperature is the only um, the density only depends on the temperature of the fluid, which isn't always true. So in a sense, these buoyant simple foam and buoyant pimple foam they are more complete solvers in that sense. Of course, they'll take longer. Alright, so I'll introduce us to buoyant simple foam by going through some of the tutorial cases and talking about how inputs are being um, inputs are being uh, made. So this is buoyant simple foam, and let's go to the most simple case. This thing called buoyant cavity. Now, uh, for the sake of time, I have already finished doing the all run on this. So what is the thing like? What is this case like? Um, okay, so picture yourself having a little block. All right, you have a cold side, have a cold side, and a hot side. All right. So what will the cold side do? The cold side will conduct heat away from the fluid, and cause the cold fluid to sink. All right. So and what does the hot side do? The hot side heats up the fluid and causes it, it, it causes it to rise. So in, all in all you will have a convection current going like so. So um, the hot, the temperature difference actually drives some sort of motion in the fluid. And let's take a look at uh, what the block mesh is like, so as to see what, uh, uh, what the geometry is like. All right, so, oops, wrong side. Let's go to system block mesh. And Maybe I should use the right side, yeah? It's a very simple case. Let me do this. And let me do this here. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so clear this up and let's go to... Okay. Am I VI, System and Block Mesh. So this is the Block Mesh Dictionary. You can see the vertices as usual. They're using a very simple blocky kind of a uh, construction, no snappy hex mesh or anything like that. So there's a front and back portion, there's a top and bottom portion, and there's one side that is hot, one side that is cold, just like what I was explaining just now. Alright, so uh, let's see the other files in the system. There isn't much here, except maybe there's this uh, sample thing. Okay, so that one just ignore first, because that's that's part of the data processing. And of course, you have control dict, as with your normal cavity stuff. Um, so it runs for a thousand seconds, and this is a steady, supposedly a steady state solver, and it solves for a compressible flow as well. 
Okay, so if you have not done compressible flow, you might want to take a little bit of a look at it, but it's not strictly that simple in my op uh, it's not strictly that necessary in my opinion. Uh, okay, so um, next thing, so we have we have uh, done the geometry already. We have looked through what the geometry is like. You know, there's a hot side and there's a cold side. Uh, so what are the boundary conditions like? So let's go to the zero folder, and you will see all of these. T, U, alpha T, epsilon, K, nu T, omega, P, and P, R, G, H. Now, from, of course, our uh, icofoam tutorials, we will know that U and P are just uh, speed, fluid, uh, velocity, and the pressure. Okay? Uh, what is this P, R, G, H? P, R, G, H is talking about the hydrostatic pressure. Right? There's a rho G, H. So the pressure... That's contributed to due to hydrostatic pressure. That is what P rho G H is. So let's take a take a look at the ones we are familiar with already. So as for the U, the U uh, velocity is pr pretty straightforward. All the walls have a no slip condition, so there's nothing too interesting here. As for P, um, it says that the internal field, the initial uh, initial pressure, is uh. 10,000, 1 times 10, oh, 100,000 of some unit. So my assumption is that, hey, this is a uh, atmospheric pressure. So nothing too, nothing too interesting there. The front and back, all of these are atmospheric pressure. Okay, so that's a P. So let's see what's the P R G H. Again, the P R G H R G H. This is the hydrostatic pressure, right? Hydrostatic pressure that is due to the rho g h component, not due to the, all right, uh, there's a heating up and then there's a cooling down. This will cause density changes. This will cause, uh, I mean, temperature changes, uh, density changes. It will cause a sort of a pressure change as well, okay, due to the motion of the fluid. That's how thermodynamics kind of work, okay. Let's see. All right, so we have gone through the, the simple bits already. Now the next thing we want to look at are the slightly less sim uh, familiar things. Omega, K, uh, nu T, K, epsilon, and alpha T. So these four, uh, at least these four, I mean, uh, you should be pretty familiar if we you have done a, a turbulent flow before because this is part of the K epsilon model where you have some turbulent viscosity, etc, uh, etc. Et now, the only thing that is new, if you have not done that already, and if you have not done that, you can go and see my, you can go and see my uh, open form uh, intermediate tutorials, uh, where I will go through some of the K epsilon model and what, what that is about. Uh, they're already online by the time this video is posted. Uh, the only thing that's not so familiar, perhaps, is this uh, alpha T, right? What is alpha T? Okay, let's see. So um, we can go inside the file first. Vi alpha t. All right, alpha t is well. Again, they have they put these inputs here. Type compressible alpha t wall function. So if you take a look at the documentation, alpha t actually uh, provides some th turbulent thermal diffusivity. So alpha is thermal diffusivity. Uh, Correct. Um, especially when it comes to conduction in a fluid or solid, you have this thermal diffusivity. However, when there's a turbulent mixing, you would expect that the overall effect of heat transfer is increased, and there's a part of that due to turbulence. So turbulent dif thermal diffusivity kind of accounts for that, if you know the equations, and I, I hope you do. Uh, I'm not going to uh, go through so much of that. Um, yeah, but uh, all in all, you should know that uh, what uh, thermal diffusivity is and the contribution uh, of the heat transfer due to extra contribution due to turbulence. Okay, so that's that's just running through the boundary conditions. Okay, so that's that's to do with the boundary conditions. You, I'm not. Uh, I, I can take just run you through the epsilon. This will be an epsilon wall function. Alright, uh, K as well, 
again not going to uh, run through how it's calculated because some of this stuff is already been covered uh, as in the concept behind it is being covered in the my intermediate tutorials so I'm not going to go through them here yeah as in the gist of the concept not not uh, the concept applicable for this case uh, so I, I did it for a pipe kind of a situation but not for this cavity situation but the rough idea you should be able to get it from there all right so next thing next thing we want to look at it's uh, how this uh, case is structured okay oh yeah before that uh, I mean we can look at the all run file but before that I just want to take a look at the constant so that we know what kind of fluids we are dealing with so there are a few things in the constant one is polymesh polymesh is just generated by uh, it, it describes the geometry generated by your block mesh uh, folder uh, it, it, uh, it is uh, yeah, it's just the geometry right um, there's no STL files here so all you see is uh, boundary faces etc etc yep this is how it, it looks like okay next thing you can look at is G so G is just the gravitational constant gravitational constant of acceleration nothing too new okay then we can look at turbulence properties if you have already done done it before uh, done uh, turbulence modeling before this shouldn't be too uh, unfamiliar to you and the model used here is k omega sst uh, not not k epsilon k epsilon is really basic this one is slightly different but the idea is pretty much the same there is a turbulence uh, going on and there are some uh, coefficients that are being printed. The print coefficient is on. Yeah, but okay. More most important is that okay, we have some turbulence model here. And why do we need turbulence modeling? If you take a look at the thermal physical properties, you can see that. All right, uh, we have some uh, thermodynamic uh, uh, property uh, property uh, input here. So this is a uh, He Vo thermal. Uh, this this I am guessing it's a compressible kind of a mixture so this is a pure mixture perfect gas all right so it's an ideal gas so that kind of gives you a clue as to what this thing is now we look at the properties of the mixture we look at the species uh, and then we, we see the molecular weight 28.96 if you have done uh, enough uh, chemistry you not all or physics or, or some uh, your old engineering stuff you know that 28.96 is the average molecular weight of air all right uh, water is about 18 but this is air so yeah your CP your uh, heat capacity is here heat of uh, yeah I suppose this is enthalpy of uh, formation or or something like that I can't quite remember but uh, I'll have to get it get back to it next time when uh, things are more clear but of course the the more important one is the viscosity yes mu this is about the mu of air and parental number of air is 0 0.75 uh, 0 0.705 yeah so we can take a look um, dynamic viscosity of air Right, so 1.81 1 times 10 to the minus 5. So we can confirm that this is the fluid that's being convected here. It is air. Okay. So that's that's what uh, the buoyant simple form case here is about. Now that I've all run it, we can just uh, sort of analyze the results later. Okay, so thanks for watching uh, this very, very basic run through of this buoyant cavity case. We have talked. We have seen how uh, how the case is structured, and of course, we we can take a look at the boundary conditions as well. Uh, I forgot this part. Okay, so front and back adiabatic zero gradient, top and bottom also zero gra gradient adiabatic. There's one side with a fixed temperature of thirty four point six degrees C, the other side with a fifteen degrees C temperature. So one hot and cold side, nothing too special. Okay, um, and of course. If you have seen, you can see the all run also. Uh, before I forget and close this thing. Yeah, so it runs the block mesh. It runs the application, get application that will be inside your uh, 
inside your uh, control dict and obviously in this case it's a boy and simple form uh, then it has post processing uh, in my intermediate tutorials we run through some of the post processing and in this special case there are some validation with real experimental data which is what this is about but to run the case you don't really need this tool you just need block mesh and the boy and simple form this is the other two are just to help generate data and graphs as uh, seen before okay so that's uh, that's what buoyant uh, cavity is like in the next video we will want to take a look at some of the results uh, take a look at some of the logs that are being run especially this one this one's very important you want to take a look at this log and uh, see how we can uh, structure future cases from there so thanks for watching see you guys next time bye bye